who are not participating in the debate. I inform the Senate that at 8.30 a.m. today, 28 proposals were received in accordance with Standing Order 75. The question of which proposal would be submitted to the Senate is determined by lot. As a result, I inform the Senate that the letter from Senator Rice proposing a matter of public importance was chosen. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? It being so, I understand informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's discussion. With the concurrence of the Senate, I will ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Senator Hanson Young. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. I rise today to contribute to this debate, and the reason that I do is because last week I was very concerned sitting in here and listening to a contribution in this place by Senator McGrath that called for in an absolute spray and attack on our public broadcaster for Triple J to be privatised and sold off. Advertised, sold off on Gumtree, Senator McGrath called for. Ads on the ABC and a number of other veiled attacks on our national broadcast. Now we know, we know, we know that this government has had the knives out for the public broadcaster from day dot. Right back when Tony Abbott promised no cuts to the ABC, only 12 months later to bring in massive cuts to the public broadcaster, and it has never stopped since then. We heard in the National Liberal Party room only a couple of sitting weeks ago, members of this government standing up and attacking the chairperson of the ABC, attacking the hard-working staff of our public broadcaster. And then, of course, there's Mr Kroger, the former president of the Liberal Party, going on Sky News and demanding that Ita go, Ita Buttrose, the chair of the ABC. Now, these attacks are just absolutely unfounded. They are um, they're the stuff of boys' locker room. They are uh, petty. And of course, it sends the message to uh, some of the knuckle draggers in the Liberal National Party that they might want to hear to beat up on the public broadcaster, beat up another woman in charge, beat up on uh, facts, news, and public interest journalism. But of course, what we've got now is members in this place, members of the government, senior members of the team in this Senate, calling for Triple J to be sold off. Now, is this the platform that the Morrison Joyce government are going to be taking to this election? And what does Mr. Joyce think about selling off Triple J, putting ads on the ABC, and this attack on the public broadcaster? Does Mr Barnaby Joyce, the new Deputy Prime Minister, think that regional Australia want to have ads on their ABC? I think not, Mr Acting Deputy President. And what's next? Paywalling iView? I mean, that's where this leads. And what you've got from this government is cut after cut after cut, attack after attack after attack. And then once the ABC is struggling, they go, oh, well, we'll just sell it off, oh, just like everything else. So well, there's going to be an election, either the end of this year or early next year, and the Morrison-Barnaby-Joyce government are telling the electorate that they want to sell the ABC and fill it, fill it full of advertising, paywall ABC iview, flog off Triple J. And I don't think Australians are going to be very happy about this at all, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. Australians love our national broadcaster. They know that when they need trustworthy news and analysis, when they need information in times of crisis, what do they do? I tell you what, they don't turn on Sky News. They don't open up their Murdoch rag. They turn on the radio or they turn on the TV or they go to ABC online and they hear directly what they need to hear from the trusted source 
that is the national broadcaster. During the summer's bushfires back in 2019-20, we know that Australians relied so much on the information that was coming from the national broadcaster in terms of those emergency warnings. What, what does this government want to do? Well, so in between a warning about a bushfire, they're going to run an ad, probably from Harvey Norman. And in the midst of this pandemic, who has the Australian people in the community turned to to know what's really going on with COVID-19, the vaccine rollout, the safety information, the health information about this health pandemic? Well, thank goodness they weren't listening to members of the National Party or the Liberal Party who don't even believe the science and the health advice often. No, they've been turning to the ABC and listening to Dr Swan because they trust the information that is coming from the public broadcaster. Now, as we move towards the election, let's be very, very clear. If you want to protect the public broadcaster, if you want to save the ABC, if you love Triple J, then you've got to vote this mob out. The attacks are not even veiled anymore. They are blatant. They are unhinged. The personal vitriol thrown towards Ita Buttrose as the chairperson of the ABC from men in the Liberal National Party is just appalling. Is there a, is there a strong woman in leadership that this government doesn't like? Another woman to tear down, just like they did Christine Holgate, and now they want to do it to Ita Buttrose. And they can't stand strong women, and they can't stand facts, information, and the public broadcaster having the support it does from the Australian community. Um, Barnaby Joyce now being elected as the Deputy Prime Minister, is he going to go around regional Australia spruiking this platform as advocated by Senator McGrath? Ads on the ABC, paywall on ABC iView, selling off our ABC radio stations to the highest bidder, filling our emergency news with ads advertising. And there's a reason that this government doesn't like the ABC, and it's because they don't like scrutiny. It's the reason this government doesn't like the public broadcaster. It's because they don't like being asked tough questions. We know. Because every time the Prime Minister gets a tough question from somebody in the press gallery or a journalist out in regional Australia, he attacks them. He dismisses it. Oh, that's just Canberra bubble. No, it's a question about your ability as a leader of this country, Prime Minister. It's your responsibility, if you want the top job, to answer the tough questions. But rather than being upfront, rather than telling the Australian people what he really wants to do, rather than being accountable and transparent, the Prime Minister lets the attack dogs in the Liberal National Party run riot about the ABC. Now, if you want to protect the public broadcaster, if you love the ABC, if you think that regional news needs to be independent, if you love Australian music, if you love knowing what's really going on, if you want access to emergency services information, instantly, when it's needed, at hand, then you've got to protect the ABC. And that means voting this mob out, making sure they can't get their claws into any more of our public broadcaster. The Liberal National Party like to kick the ABC and use it as a punching bag. Well, thank God there is such 
strong will within the Australian community to protect our public broadcaster, to protect news, to support and demand accountability, and thank goodness for Ita Buttrose, who's standing strong in the face of such disgusting vitriol from members of the Liberal Party, from members of the National Party, from members of Mr Morrison and Mr Joyce's team. You, know, you might think the Liberal Party bully boys have, um, have got their way with Ita. Well, I tell you what, she eats men like you for breakfast, mate, and she won't be, she won't be cowering at your attacks on the ABC. Senator McGrath. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Triple J should be sold, and there should be ads on the ABC. Simple. Because when we get to the model of the ABC, and it's very important to understand the history of, of where the Australian Broadcasting Corporation comes from in terms of its commencement as back in 1932 as the Australian Broadcasting Commission and further back in history as the National Broadcasting Service in 1928. You understand that it was established to, to fill a gap in the market because we're talking about a period of Australian history where the media was just emerging, uh, that the cricket scores weren't broadcast live uh, from, from Lords. They were actually sent by telegram, and, and the, the radio wireless operators would, would read out the telegrams as if they were live scores being replayed uh, fr from London. Now, the media market has moved on since then, Mr Acting Deputy President. That was you know, 90 years ago. Since then, we've seen this wonderful thing invented called the internet, which means every device like this, Mr Acting Deputy President, is a device for us to, to seek news, to, to be a purveyor of news, to transmit news and to, be, and to give an informed opinion on the world. I mean, I was uh, during a particularly boring part of the Senate where one of the Greens was speaking before Mr Acting Deputy President, I was reading uh, The Times online and The Daily Telegraph, seeing the latest that's happening from, from overseas in terms of, of, of what's happening over there. Very, very, very important. And what we find is this very patronising approach from those on the left who think there has to be a taxpayer-funded national broadcasting service. There actually doesn't have to be a taxpayer-funded national broadcasting service. In my home state of Queensland, uh, back in the 1920s, we had uh, taxpayer-owned butcher shops. We had, uh, even in, in, in the town of, of, of Babinda, there was a, a government-owned pub. Society has moved on since then. And the failure of the ABC and of the board, including the chair, is a failure to understand how Australians get their news and that there is a plurality in the media market. And for the ABC to constantly and consistently portray themselves as being the sole arbiter of all that is right and justice in this world is just an example of this, this poor, sanctimonious approach that they take to people who do live outside the Canberra bubble. Now, what the ABC failed to understand, especially when they, understand, when they don't understand those on the centre-right of politics, is that I don't want a right-wing ABC. I don't want a left-wing ABC. If there is to be an ABC, it should be an impartial national broadcaster. But sadly, the ABC consistently fails to understand that people voted for Scott Morrison as Prime Minister. People like Scott Morrison as Prime Minister. And the ABC just don't get that. And when I ask the question, name one conservative commentator or journalist on the ABC, and the left go feral and they go, oh, you know, why are you asking that question? It's because, because consistently there are no conservative commentators or journalists on the ABC. I just want one. One conservative commentator on the ABC. Just please, just one. Just give me one. And the fact the ABC consistently fail to do that shows to me that they are snubbing, snubbing those quiet, aspirational Australians. So the question must be, Mr Acting uh, Deputy President, is then why should the taxpayers pay for it? Why should the taxpayers pay for a, for a 
a national broadcasting service uh, that, that fails to consistently appreciate how most Australians live their lives. Now, I'm someone who actually is a fan of the ABC. I like the ABC. And I think the ABC should be reformed to save itself. I think we need to sell or off their inner city headquarters, sell off Ultimo, that, that grand palace that would make a, would make a German <laughs> prince blush, uh, you know, sell off the headquarters in Brisbane and Sydney and move all of the staff out of, out of the CBDs to the suburbs. And Queensland would love to see the ABC staff based in you know, Beanley or, or Birkengarry or um, you know, further west of Fargaminda, somewhere like that. Get out of the, the CBD. And, and that will help those staff realise that that latte bubble is not how most Australians live. <coughs> Secondly, I do think the ABC, there should be a review, excuse me, um, <coughs> there should be a review of, of the Charter and, and the Governing Act, and there hasn't been a detailed review for some time. And that review should look into what is the purpose of a taxpayer-funded national broadcasting service, and if there is to be one, should there be ads on it? I think there should be ads on the ABC. There are ads on the SBS, and, and certainly the quality of programming on, on, on SBS has not been diluted in, in any way or form. But also, Triple J should be sold, because it goes to why was the ABC set up in the first place? It was set up to fill a gap in the market. Now, the Triple J, uh, Triple J, sorry, is by all accounts, I'm told, a, a, a successful radio station that, that garners towards a particular demographic, especially those 15 to 25. And funnily enough, those between the ages of 15 and 25 actually have quite a lot of money to spend. So you'll find that advertisers will be very keen to, to, to advertise on, on Triple J, and it could be self-funding. So why don't we just sell it off and let it be self-funded, and you'll still have that quality music that, that those opposites seem so, so obsessed with. But it would mean the taxpayers aren't funding Triple J. And the third point of, of how we should reform the ABC, and this goes to, to the recruitment of, of, of their staff. And there are many fine and good people who work at the ABC, and, and I, acknowledge, I acknowledge that. But there is a group think that has taken over that organisation that has got particularly worse. Um, these are staff who, who, who sort of work together, they're lovely people, but they think the same. They think the same in terms of how, how Scott Morrison um, is not, should not be Prime Minister. It's this, this Scott Morrison sort of derangement syndrome. They can't believe that Bill Shorten didn't win the last election and that Scott Morrison somehow is Prime Minister. And they've never, ever come to terms with that. And we see that um, most particularly, Mr Acting Deputy President, um, with some of the recent programs. I'm just going to mention Four Corners a couple of weeks ago, uh, where Four Corners um, attacked the Prime Minister because he has a friend and this friend has some, you know, as I think the Prime Minister, well, I will say, some, some wacky views. And the Prime Minister was very strong in, in, in condemning the views of, 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 of QAnon. But what the ABC failed to mention in this program, where they had someone on this program, is that one of the key witnesses was, is a serial conspiracy theorist who has twice been detained by the fixated persons unit of the Queensland Police and admits he took part in the TV program to politically damage Scott Morrison. So here is the ABC uh, allowing, quite frankly, a nut job to go on their so-called premier current affairs program and, and attack the Prime Minister. But of course the ABC didn't say, oh, this person's been twice detained by the Queensland Police because, quite frankly, they're a nut job. They put them up on, on a pedestal. And this is what the ABC fails to understand, that those on the centre-right of politics are sick of you. And it is very dangerous for you in the ABC. Because why should the taxpayers of this country continue to fund an organisation that continually, continually derides and sells down those of us who have centre-right views. And I can tell you that the thought leaders in the centre-right community around Australia are also sick of the ABC. And so the ABC needs to reform itself. 
And the challenge is for Ita Buttrose to understand that the centre right of the politics are, con are continually and increasingly questioning the role of the ABC in modern society and are actually questioning whether there is a need for the ABC. Now, in my, my maiden speech, I said if the ABC didn't reform itself, it should be privatised, but there should be a rural and regional broadcasting service. And so I, I repeat that today. I think it is time for the government to look into the ABC to whether it should be halved. We should have a rural and regional broadcasting service and we sell off the rest. Because if the ABC won't reform itself, well, on behalf of the taxpayers of Australia who put a billion dollars a year into this organisation, we want value for our money and we're not getting it at the moment. Thank you. Senator Smith. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I too rise to speak on this matter of public importance. And in doing so, I wasn't quite sure just then if I was sitting here in the Senate or a young Liberal branch meeting or even Senator McGrath's living room listening to him shout at his television. Just uh, anyway, perhaps it's best to let Senator McGrath's contribution speak for itself rather than me unpacking it line by line. Deputy President, Acting Deputy President, the ABC has a long and proud history at the heart of the Australian media landscape. It is consistently one of our most trusted institutions, with 72 per cent of Australians agreeing the ABC is their most trusted source of news and current affairs. During the depths of the COVID pandemic, 61 per cent of Australians tuned into its digital platforms, showing that it really matters when accurate, timely information really matters, Australians turn to the ABC. It's an incredibly valued and impactful institution. Its flagship current affair programs have shaped news coverage, driven significant policy change. Children's content like Bluey has become an international phenomenon. Despite the assertions of some of those opposite, the ABC is not some ivory tower in the inner cities. In regional Australia and in regional South Australia, it is more important than ever. Often the ABC still is the only provider of vital local content. It keeps Australians connected with their communities and the broader nation, as shown by their weekly reach among regional Australians being 49.5 per cent in 2019-20. The ABC also saves lives in times of disaster. We've seen it time and time again, and during the black summer bushfires in my state, we saw it also. South Australians tuned into the ABC to get the vital and critical information they needed to keep their families safe. If that's not relevance to regional South Australians, I don't know what is. Despite the clear importance the ABC holds to Australia and Australians, including the regional South Australians that Senator McGrath was talking about before, it has been subject to burdensome efficiency measures and ideological driven cuts under the Abbott, Turnbull, Morrison, Trust, Joyce, McCormack and Joyce governments. I think I've got them there, but, but under all of those governments. In 2020, they were facing an $83 million cut in funding, forcing them to operate on increasingly fine margins and putting enormous strain on their staff systems and failures. I sat there in estimates as the minister tried to deny they were making these cuts, but they were. They were in black and white and they were confirmed by the CFO at the time. These cuts meant that 250 staff could be facing the sack. There was an enormous amount of talent, passion and knowledge on the line from our national broadcaster. And of course, it's not just staffing which is under threat when the Liberals enforce these brutal co cuts. It's programs like the flagship 7.45 a.m. radio news bulletin, which was uh, cut after 81 years on air. Many other iconic programs have faced reduced episodes and resourcing. With every one of the eight long years that has passed since Tony Abbott's false promise of no cuts to the ABC, this Liberal government has embarked on brutal cuts, which leave Australians with less and less service from their loved and cherished national broadcaster. Senator McGrath has come in today, openly called for the ABC to be privatised, openly made that call. It's not veiled, it's not hidden. That's what he wants to see. A member of the Liberal government, uh, quite high up on the Senate ticket, if my memory serves me correct now, calling for the ABC to be privatised. These are calls which go deep within their ranks. But let's imagine if they were privatised and their board were suddenly responsible 
to delivering a profit to shareholders? Will they still broadcast the important emergency information ad-free that keeps Australians safe? Will they invest in valuable Australian-made TV over cookie-cutter television content produced overseas? Would they still have local journalists in regional areas, or would, like some of the commercial networks have done, just have centrally produced news grabs filmed in other states? A privatised ABC would be a disaster. It would be a disaster for all Australians. And of course, something that is often lost in these discussions about the future of the ABC is Triple J and how these absurd calls from Senator McGrath to see it privatised would impact young Australians. And it's no real surprise to me that these calls to privatise Triple J are coming from those who haven't been uh, particularly relevant to their target market for several decades. Triple J is the incubator of unique and experimental Australian music. South Australian artists like George Alice and the most recent Unearthed High winners, Teenage Jones, all featured on Triple J, leading to broader commercial success. And it's just not, not just Unearthed, it's also the other Australian musicians and bands and artists who get that valuable airtime on Triple J, which leads to other commercial opportunities, which wouldn't have been there otherwise. And it's not just music. Triple J is also home to exceptional reporting through the HAT program, produced, reported and broadcast by young people for young people covering topics which impact young Australians. Australians who often feel ignored by this Liberal government and often feel ignored by the other networks. In just the past few months, the team at Hack has produced stories on consent reforms, the failure of online dating platforms to address sexual harassment and assault, and in-depth reporting on how the federal budget impacts young people. These stories matter to young people. Having relevant content produced for them, by them, matters to young people. And without Triple J, it's unlikely they would be able to have access it. And particularly under a privatised Triple J, it's hard to see how this content would continue, how this support for our budding Australian artists would continue. Very few institutions in Australia have the reach and impact amongst young Australians that Triple J can boast. Most of us would have tuned into it when we were young. Actually, maybe I'll reflect on that looking around the chamber. Certainly some of us would have tuned into Triple J when we were younger. Yeah. There we go. There we go. A broad, broad cross-section of this chamber tuned into Triple J when we were young. So shouldn't we stand for them now? Shouldn't we stand for them now? Shouldn't we stand for them now when they continue to provide that vital service to young Australians? Of course, it's not just the youth who would be affected, but kids too. Ads on the ABC would be a disaster for the children who tune in afternoon after afternoon. Do we really want our kids exposed to ads while they're watching play school, putting on the Gruffalo after school, having a snack, being exposed to anything from junk food advertising, games, toys, gambling, ads from the private sector that we can't necessarily control? With corporate advertising on the ABC, there would be a slippery slope, a slippery slope, and our kids could be some of the most affected. The ABC produces some of Australia's, actually the world's, best children's programming. Like countless families across Australia and my household, Kangaroo Beach and Bluey are absolute staples. And I'm grateful that my three-year-old can turn on the TV and find age-appropriate, educational and engaging content. It's hard to imagine any of these shows getting the investment required and therefore the reach if it weren't for the ABC. And that developmentally appropriate content on television is absolutely critical, and it's really critical particularly for vulnerable kids, and vulnerable kids who don't actually have access to some of the commercial content, who can't afford Netflix, who can't afford other pay per view providers. It matters to those kids. It matters that that's on the, on the ABC. But of course, it's not just our ABC which is under attack from this government. Community television in my state of South Australia and in Melbourne and Geelong is also being systematically attacked by the Liberal government. Community television is incredibly important to South Australians and Victorians. It contributes so much to our communities and is facing a rapidly approaching end thanks to this Liberal government. 
During the pandemic, Community TV was there for South Australians and Victorians, especially people in my state of faith who couldn't go to their services because they were closed down because of the pandemic. They provide incredible training opportunities, job opportunities. I've spoken to volunteers from Channel 44 who got their start as a volunteer at that station and then were able to use that to go on and get work commercially. But instead of valuing this asset, the Liberals want to kick it off air. They want to kick it off air when it costs them nothing to keep it on air and they have no plans to replace it. They're kicking community television off air to replace it with static. And it is absolutely unacceptable. It's an ideologically driven attack on community TV from a government and a minister which holds a callous disrespect for those who make it and watch it, just like they do with the ABC. They attack precious community assets that matter to Australians, and we won't stand for it. Senator Steele, John. Thank you. In making this speech today, I'd like to, to dedicate it to that wonderful organisation, the Friends of the ABC. Um, and uh, particularly to my mate in Western Australia, Margot Webb, um, who uh, recently uh, chased me down and gave me the forms and information to become uh, a member, a friend of the ABC, um, and also to get me to become an official member of an organisation here in the Parliament, which I'd assumed I was already a part of, which is the Parliamentary Friends um, of the ABC. I was. Uh, lucky enough to spend a bit of time chatting to a couple of regional heads of uh, the Friends of the ABC organisation that were uh, in the building for a, a Parliamentary Friends of the ABC event. Um, and I put to them some of the ideas that uh, have been, been circulated recently in relation to the future of our national broadcaster, particularly the idea that is floated by uh, some in the Liberal Party and in, in the national spaces, uh, that it be separated um, and that a uh, rural and regional broadcaster be created and the rest of it sold off. Um, and the president, I think it was, of the New South Wales regional chapter um, was quite angry with that idea and I was, I was quite surprised. I said, you know, why? What would be the problem for, uh, for that with you? And she said, well, one of the greatest challenges that we have as country people um, is that the people in the cities don't always seem to understand us. Um, and we, being isolated in rural and regional communities, don't get the opportunity to connect and engage with what's happening in uh, metro and other areas of the country. And so the fact that the ABC serves both uh, the rural and regional communities and the metro communities uh, allows it to act as a bridge between the two um, and ensure a continuation of shared understanding. And she said it was, <laughs> she said to me it was actually quite offensive to assume that any particular content on the ABC wouldn't be relevant uh, to, to rural and regional communities. Um, because actually, people in rural and regional communities like to know what's going on uh, in other parts of the country too. Um, and then we had a very interesting conversation about how uh, certain political parties in this place uh, seem to function to reduce uh, rural and regional identities and communities down to a flat parody of what they actually are for political purposes. And I said to them, well, enough about the National Party. Let's get back to the ALP um, and to the ABC more broadly. On the question of our national broadcaster, um, I've got to say I love it. Um, and there are so many people in our community that feel the same. As somebody that came to Australia from the UK, I, now I hide my accent well, um, but it was uh, something that allowed me to begin to develop my identity as an Australian person and, and to connect with the community that I joined. I, I remember so fondly, obviously, a play school um, and, and all, of, uh, all of that. Also, uh, for anybody watching along at home, there was a series the ABC did when I was a kid called um, Ace Lightning, which was a early um, kind of uh, attempt to uh, meld together a children's program and like a computer animated thing, 
which I absolutely loved and rewatched recently and remembered and realized how utterly terrible the graphics were by modern standards. Um, but between that and the educational portions of ABC programming in the morning um, on the TV, uh, that, was, that was it for me, really. I, I consumed it all, loved it all, um, and found it, yeah, an, an amazing source of knowledge and information and connection to community and to the world. Um, and it struck me then, uh, even as a kid, that it seemed to be you could go to the ABC, whether on the radio, listening to a, a radio national programme, um, at night on the beach in Rockingham, listening to a story about thylacines. Um, I think I was probably eight at the time. Um, or whether it's, uh, you know, the children's programming in the afternoon, um, or, you know, sitting on Pop's knee watching Late Line when it was technically bedtime. Um, that it was somewhere that you could go where there wasn't the noise. You know, you could actually just go and engage with the information. Um, now, in this job, um, I've discovered that that is so much the case. Um, if you put the ABC next to any of its commercial equivalents, uh, there's just no comparison. I mean, putting aside the, the gross, horrible, spewing stuff that comes out of a channel like Sky often, um, trying, to, trying to consume their content uh, is uh, really actually quite challenging because there's about 14 million things happening on the screen simultaneously um, and it breaks every five or ten minutes for an ad session. Um, every Australian should be concerned that there are views given oxygen within their government that are not only um, uh, somewhat questioning of the value of the ABC, they are nakedly hostile to the ABC. Nakedly hostile to the ABC. They want to cut it up and sell it off. They don't want it to be a thing anymore. And they'll come in here and they'll give you all of these arguments and they'll clasp their hands behind their back like it's a young liberal meeting. Um, and talk about the history and all the rest of it. The reality is, if you cut it all down and cut out the noise, what is their problem? Their problem is that sometimes the ABC has the gall to fact check them. That's the problem. And it fact checks them and it finds out they're speaking nonsense and then they come in here and they have a sad. And they take that sad to the cabinet room and they put all of these ideological ideas around it and they say, for these reasons, we've got to cut the thing up and sell it off. When really it's just that they're annoyed with the fact that they've been fact-checked and called out. Well, rather than trying to take the knife to the national broadcaster, may I suggest that a better course of action is actually to do your homework before you speak. And then this whole thing can be avoided. Now, Senator Anton Young, who has done fantastic work uh, in this space, and I think is quite fairly regarded as the Parliament's fiercest champion for the national broadcaster, has made the observation that those currently uh, criticising, uh, uh, made the observation that Ida Buttrose, the current chair, uh, could eat some of her critics for breakfast. Uh, I totally agree uh, that she absolutely should. Uh, uh, but knowing some of her critics, uh, I would suggest that she not do that, because uh, I can't imagine that they would be very good for her health. Um, uh, well, she's a vegan. Okay, well, then they're safe. Um, specifically to the idea of selling off Triple J. Uh, Triple J is a fantastic institution. Um, it is often one of the only mediums through which uh, information about uh, public affairs, uh, complex issues in our community are actually addressed by young people uh, in a way that is relevant to our lives. Um, programs like Hack are indispensable uh, and it also has the proud honour of being uh, the host of the world's largest uh, experiment in musical democracy uh, with over three million people participating in the hottest 100 process every single year. 
Um, it is a platform that has given uh, a space to innumerable artists that make incredible contributions uh, to our cultural life as a, as a community. Um, and it absolutely should be preserved and celebrated. The ABC, as I said at the beginning, is excellent and should be celebrated and supported and well-funded. This government's taken about a billion dollars out of it between 2014 and what they plan to do through to the 2024 budget. Now, not only is this money uh, in need of urgent return to the ABC, uh, what is actually needed is for uh, the proper investment to be made. It's not good enough just to take them back to where they were in 2012. We actually need to see a proper investment in our ABC so that it is able to be the dynamic, diverse, relevant uh, and trustworthy public broadcaster uh, that our community loves, uh, needs uh, and wants to continue existing. Thank the Chamber its time. Senator Scar. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I think in the, in the first instance I would like to correct the record in one sense, and that is that there are members on this side of the chamber who have listened to Triple J. There are members of the chamber who have listened to Triple J. And I must say, whilst um, my good friend from Western Australia was giving his uh, wistful uh, remembrances in terms of engagement with the public broadcaster, I thought back to 1991 when uh, I, I, I was going through... No, you weren't born yet, absolutely. And I'd gone through a particularly uh, torrid um, uh, matter of the heart and I was looking for uh, some emotional soccer and uh, I spent the day listening to Triple J's Hottest 100. So it was uh, 1991 and... Uh, sorry, what was that, Senator Watt? And... Order. 1991, and let me tell you what was on um, Triple J's Hottest 100 in 1991. Number one was Smell, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Number two, Love Will Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. Now, that wasn't a particularly great song for me to be listening to in that state of mind. Lithium by Nirvana. It all had a pretty bleak quality, I must say. Uh, Throw Your Arms Around Me by Hunters and Collectors. Tomorrow, Windy. How Soon Is Now by The Smiths. Blister in the Sun by Violet Femmes. Now, I listen, I've heard that song at many uh, young Liberal conventions after dark, the uh, Violent Femmes. So there are those of us on this side of the chamber who have engaged with Triple J in the past and have, uh, and I, I, I was a fan of Triple J. I'm more likely now to listen to jazz on ABC after dark, I must say, I must say, but, uh, but uh, I do listen to our public broadcasters. One point which has been missed in this debate from those who have uh, spoken on the other side of this topic has been with respect to how ads, advertisements, have actually assisted one of our great public broadcasters, the SBS, in terms of delivering quality material to the Australian people. And I just want to quote from SBS's uh, annual corporate plan 2020-21, and this is on page 13, and I quote, SBS's unique hybrid funding model means that commercial returns may be channelled back, channeled back into curating charter-focused content, while continued government funding support allows for stability and long-term creative ambitions to be realised." End quote. End quote. So we actually have an example. We have an example of a publicly owned broadcaster which has a hybrid model. There is a degree of advertising. There is a degree of advertising on SBS, and its charter has not been undermined. So those on the opposite side of the chamber should reflect, should reflect on the fact that SBS has managed, has managed to run ads whilst also being true to its charter. It has not undermined its independence. It has not undermined the important public function that it has undertaken. SBS's 2019 to 20 annual report, uh, item 1.2a in the financial statement, says that from service delivery, including advertising revenue, SBS in 2020 generated $114 million of revenue. $114 million of revenue. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't it a good thing that whilst having the safeguards in place to protect its editorial independence, 
especially around news and current affair, affairs. It's managed to generate a stream of revenue, a stream of revenue, which has allowed it to produce more content. Isn't that a positive thing? Why do we have to be so negative, negative about commercial realities, which is that appropriate advertising can generate revenue, which can assist in paying for quality content, assist in paying for quality content for the benefit of the Australian people. SBS has appropriate safeguards in place with respect to advertising, and I quote from um, section 5 of the Code of Practice 2014, I quote, SBS may broadcast advertisements and sponsorship announcements that run in total for not more than five minutes in, an in any hour of broadcasting. Revenue from advertisements and sponsorship announcements assists in the funding of programming which fulfils SBS's charter obligations. Those, op end of quote. Those opposite haven't mentioned this at all, this hybrid model and the success of it. Hasn't been mentioned. Hasn't been mentioned. SBS, the three SBS hasn't been mentioned by those opposite during the course of this debate. Because it undermines their argument, to be frank. It undermines their argument because this hybrid model actually works. I quote again from section five of the Code of Practice. All decisions regarding commercial revenue are subject to the overriding principle that the integrity of the SBS charter and SBS's editorial independence are paramount. SBS reserves the exclusive right to determine what is broadcast on SBS services. End quote. Entirely appropriate. The safeguard is there which permits advertising on a public broadcaster, which enables SBS to produce more content, Australian content, for the benefit of the Australian community. What's the problem? What's the problem? It actually works. So then again we look at the facts. I don't need an ABC fact checker on this. The ABC or whoever's listening, you can do your fact checking on me. Uh, page 75 of the annual report 2020 from SBS actually has a section on page 75 dealing with the SBS Ombudsman. And this details the complaints because SBS actually has a complaint process. If you have some concern about ads undermining the editorial independence of SBS. And let's look at the figures. So during the course of uh, the period with 2019 to 2020, in relation to complaints, there were 34 complaints with respect to accuracy on the SBS, not many. 29 per cent with respect to 29, I should say, with respect to how different programs were classified. Again, not, not terribly many, but a few complaints there. How many complaints were there about advertising on, the, on SBS? How many? Eight. Eight. Eight complaints about advertising on SBS. Less than one a month. Eight. Eight complaints. So where's the issue? Where's the issue? Isn't it a good thing to allow our public broadcasters to generate a stream of revenue which will enable them, enable them to produce more Australian-based content and actually discharge their service? I mean, the reality of the matter is there are so many calls made upon us in this place for funding from so many desirable uh, endeavours and things which we need to address in this place. The permission for SBS to have advertising and the track record of adver advertising on SBS demonstrates that it can work in the context of a public broadcaster. And we've seen it work. Eight complaints, 2019 to 2020. That's all there's been. Eight complaints. I don't know. I've been trying to find out how they were resolved to actually see how many of them uh, went through to ACMA or the different complaint authorities and were assessed and judged. But that's all there is. There's only eight complaints in the whole year. How many people watch SBS? Only eight complaints. There could be eight complaints from one person, as much as I know. I don't know how many people actually complained. But there's the proof. There's the proof, Mr Acting Deputy President. There's the proof that a hybrid model actually works. And it enables SBS to produce more content for the benefit of the Australian people. Isn't that a good thing? Wouldn't we like to see more women's sport? on our public broadcaster, and if in order to get that women's sport on our public broadcaster there needs to be some advertising or sponsorship, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? SBS has demonstrated that it can work. It can work. We need to be open-minded open -minded with respect to funding op opportunities for our public broadcasters. They provide an absolutely valuable, invaluable service to the Australian community. 
and I think um, those opposite, by very fact, by the very fact that they refused or decided not to, I, they must be aware. I can't believe they're not aware of the fact that SBS runs ads. I'm a frequent watcher of SBS, SBS World Movies, a lot of the uh, cultural programming on SBS, current affairs in particular. So I, I assume those opposite are watching SBS, but not one of them, not one of them in this debate has actually mentioned advertising on SBS. And I can only assume it's because there's some sort of ideological objection to having ads on a public broadcaster, even though it works. Even though it works. So don't come into this place through you, Mr Acting Deputy President, don't come into this place throwing bricks at those of us on this side of the chamber and accuse us of being ideologues when you're not prepared to enter into a reasonable discussion about a hybrid funding model which over the course of quite a few years SBS has been running has proven to be successful, as demonstrated by the fact there were only eight complaints during 2019 to 2020 in thank, relation to advertising you, on SBS. Uh, Senator McCarthy. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to speak on this matter of, uh, of public importance. And uh, just to pick up on uh, Senator Scar's uh, uh, last comments there in terms of SBS and ABC, well, I've had the opportunity to work at both, Mr Acting Deputy President. And in fact, I can give a comparison of what it's like. Uh, this has to be about whether the Australian Parliament uh, supports public broadcasting in this country, and in what form does it support uh, public broadcasting. If we look at the history, uh, certainly over the last eight years, ten year, uh, certainly the eight years that the, the uh, coalition government has been in, there has been no doubt the enormous cuts uh, to public broadcasting in this country. Uh, have been exponential, uh, not only with SBS but incredibly so with the ABC. We only have to look at the regional areas of this country, and I'm sure all of those members in the other House who have electorates in the regional areas of Australia will know how valuable and how absolutely vital uh, the public broadcaster is to this country. We've seen uh, those here in the Senate from regional areas who have joined with us in our battles to stop the cuts to the ABC. Let's look at shortwave, for example, in the Northern Territory. For many, many years we fought, and we even had uh, Senator McKenzie join us on this side, certainly with Senate inquiries, uh, acknowledging the fact that the public broadcaster is an absolutely vital service. Cutting it and cutting it and cutting it completely uh, in those areas where it reaches remote Australians and regional Australians is having a detrimental impact. So let's acknowledge in the Senate that those cuts have been unfair. So when you throw on top of it the pressure of now having to go down the path of advertising on the ABC and you compare the advertising on SBS, well, there hasn't been an adequate body of work done on that. Because I can tell you, Senators, you would only have to ask some of those employees in SBS as to how they think that organisation is running. And I can tell you a few things of what they tell me. So no, Having advertising on SBS isn't the panacea that uh, senators opposite would like to think it is, and nor is it an example that you should hold up that says this is why the ABC should be going down that path. You know that's not good policy, and yes, it's all about politics. But the Australian Parliament has to be better than that. The Australian government has to be better than that. Ask the Australian people what they think. Come to the Northern Territory and find out what people feel in relation to the fact that shortwave has disappeared for nearly five years, where we once were able to hear when cyclones were coming, when we were able to be aware of road floodings, road closures, when remote communities, when rangers out 
on their boats, when fish shows out on the seas, were able to tune into the ABC through shortwave, they can no longer do that. Time and time again, I've stood in the Senate to express the importance of the ABC in our remote and regional Australia. If you think putting ads on Triple J, on ABC programs, is going to be the answer, then you're just missing the point as usual. The public broadcaster is vital in its role as an independent media service not influenced by political or commercial interests. And yet this government wants to see Aussie kids watching advertisements during children's programming and it wants to see commercial influence in ABC News and Current Affairs. Haven't we just seen in recent weeks the complete attack on the ABC over the importance of the integrity in reporting. You, you cannot even agree with it now, and then you want to throw in something else to just add to the pressures that that organisation is experiencing. It's hardly surprising, isn't it? We know that this government is on a mission to destroy the public broadcaster. You absolutely are. There is no doubt about what your intentions are. We know that you have form. And I've given one example of shortwave in the Northern Territory, and we're still our cattle stations up there, our truckies who drive the highways, and the grey nomads who go along the Stewart Highway and beyond. There's no way they know what's going on because you remove that. Oh yeah, you can say that the ABC made that decision, but there was a reason why it was forced to make that kind of decision. It's because you lot keep taking, keep taking, keep taking the amount of money that's required to keep a very good public service in this country. In 2018, the, federal, the Liberal Federal Council voted to privatise the ABC. And we all know about the Howard government's attempt to privatise ABC. International was an abject failure. You remember that one? You know, ABC overseas. Yeah, you probably forget that one conveniently. And since the coalition came to power in 2014, the ABC has lost $783 million in funding. That's according to a 2020 report into the accumulated impact of government cuts to the public broadcaster. And the report's author said the ABC was now operating with the smallest budget since the Howard government's 2 per cent funding cut in 1996 removed $55 million from the ABC's triennial funding. Today the ABC has more services, including iView, ABC Online and podcasts, yet so much less money. So while facing these cuts, the bushfire crisis of summer 2020 added an extra $3 million in emergency broadcasting costs, which had to be absorbed into the budget. And we're certainly grateful that they did. The ABC saves lives during emergency times, with journalists in newsrooms across the country working tirelessly to get accurate and up-to-date information out. How many senators in this chamber sit on their iPads, sit on their phones and go through the news and check what the ABC is reporting. It's all those journalists and producers out there who are bringing it in here for you. Objectivity. They are bringing stories from right around the country, all the way up there in Arnhem Land, northeast Arnhem Land, across to the Kimberleys, down to Perth, over to Adelaide, across to Victoria, Mildura, Wagga, you name it, ABC journos are bringing this Senate, this country, the stories that matter. And yet you continuously disrespect that organisation, which is our national organisation as a public broadcaster. And senators opposite have asked about SBS. Well, SBS certainly does punch above its weight. But let me tell you that if you're absolutely serious in wanting to know what uh, the workers 
of SBS and the workers of the ABC think about advertising, then put it to the test. Do your homework. But don't just go in there demanding that, that advertising needs to take place on the ABC simply because, A, you don't want to give it any more money, and B, you don't like it anyway. Because that's what this is about, isn't it? It is about politics. It's not about good policy. The journalists, the producers, the staff, the camera crews, the editors, all of the people who work in our ABC newsrooms, ABC offices, from dramas to children's programming, they do an exceptional job. And this parliament needs to show more respect for all of those people who work in our public broadcaster, the ABC and SBS. The time for discussion has expired. I shall now proceed.